This is our test of the sound system in the stream.
Good evening and Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, I know you could do better than that. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Congregation Beth Ahaba. We're so glad you're here. I'm Rabbi Scott Nagel. This is Cantor Sarah Beck Berman. Our music director, Natan Bernstein, is at the piano. For those of you unfamiliar with our prayer book, Mishkan Tefillah, the most important thing is that you have one. It opens from right to left in the Hebrew fashion. On each page, you'll find traditional Hebrew prayers transliteration of the Hebrew into English characters and translation into English as well. And we encourage you to use any and all that are comfortable and meaningful for you, regardless of what it is we are doing up here on the Bema. Please note the book is presented in a two-page format on occasion. So if you're looking for the continuation of a prayer, the end of a prayer, or you're simply lost, just turn the page. We are going to begin our worship this evening as we welcome the Sabbath bride with Lacha Dodi on page 20. Page 20. We're going to be doing verses 1, 2, and 9 together. And when we get to verse 9, we'll rise, face the entrance to the sanctuary, and bow as we welcome the Sabbath bride. Page 20. Please be seated. 
It's my pleasure now to invite Leslie McManus and David Buxbaum to the Bema as they lead us in the lighting of our Sabbath lights and Kiddush, blessing over wine or grape juice, sanctifying the Sabbath day. We continue together on page two. Page two. Eloheinu melech halom, asher kirishanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu lehad nikler shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, southern of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. Continue together on page five. Is this it? Page five for Kiddush. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Peri Hagafen. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Gishanu Mitzvotav Shalom. As they are taking their seats, we're going to turn together to page 28. Page 28 and rise together for our call to worship Barhu.
as we turn to our prayer for the evening sky at the top of page 31, I ask my customary question, what phase is the moon in? Anybody know? Shout it out. Yes, great job. Waning gibbous or waning gibbous moon, which I don't even write it on my menu anymore because my watch always tells me what the moon is, it's great. And we know also, if in case we can't see the moon, we know also it's a waning gibbous moon because of the time of the Jewish month. We're waning towards the end of the month of Adar Sheni, the second month of Adar in this leap year. And as the moon is going towards its new cycle, and as we're going towards the month that contains Passover, we're thinking about all those works of creation visible in the night sky as we say our prayer for the evening at the top of page 31 together. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars. Creator of the tide of time and light, you guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch atah Adonai, Hamaari aravi. Amen. We continue now on page 34, page 34, as we prepare for Shema. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Shema Yisrael Adonai Shema May be seated. We continue with Via Hafta, page 36. Via Hafta, Adonai Elohecha, Behol of Abecha, Ufona Shecha, Uvehol Melzecha, Veha you had Varim Haile. Asher anochi mitzavecha hayom alevavecha b'shinantam levanecha v'dibartam b'shivtecha b'veitecha uvlechecha v'derech uvshoch becha. Ukumecha, Ukshartam leho taliadecha, Vehayu letota fohot, Bene mecha, Uchtab tam, Almezuzot betecha, Uvishavrecha, Lema antis hiru. Ba'asitem et kol mitzvotai V'yitem kedoshim L'elohechem Ani Adonai Elohechem Asher hotzei t'yechem Me'eret mitzrayim L'yot lachem L'elohim Ani Adonai Elohechem 
We read together on the top of page 39. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before we ever stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. Our song of freedom, Micha Mocha, page 40. Continue together on the bottom of page 44 as we celebrate keyword celebrate Shabbat with Yismechu. Yes, Mehu. 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 Yes, Yes, Mehu, yes, Mehu, the man of the heart. Yes, Mehu, the man of the heart. Show me, 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 show me. Yeah. Well, we've come now to the central portion of our worship, Tefillah. We turn together to page 46 page 46, as we rise together in prayer.
be seated. <clears throat> we read together in the middle of page 57. Page 57. Together. You are with us in our prayer, our love, and our doubt, in our longing to feel your presence and do your will. You are the still clear voice within us, Therefore, O oh God, when doubt troubles us, when anxiety makes us tremble, when pain clouds the mind, we look inward for the answer to our prayers. There may we find you, and there find courage, insight, and endurance. And let our worship bring us closer to one another, that all Israel and all who seek you may find new strength for your service. Baruch Adonai, she'otcha levalcha be'ira na'avot. We continue on page 60 with our first prayer for peace. Shalom Rav.
take a few moments of silent prayer and reflection, either with the words on the page or the meditations of our own hearts. For our second prayer for peace tonight, we turn to page 352. In place of Oseh Shalom, we'll sing Lu Yihi, which is Naomi Shemer, um, poet laureate of Israel's take on Let It Be. 352 has the lyrics and 353 has the meaning of the words, and we'll sing the first three verses, the chorus to which is, Lu Yehi, Lu Yehi, Kol Shenevakesh, Lu Yehi, may it be, may it be, that all that we ask for come to pass.
turn together in our Shabbat programs to the prayer for the State of Israel and Israel Defense Forces. We read together. Eternal God, receive our prayers for the peace and security of the State of Israel and its people. Spread blessing upon the land and upon all who labor in its interest. Adonai, you blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Bless now all the soldiers of the Israel Defense Forces and all those who are protecting our people. Protect them and free them from all trouble and anxiety, and may all that they do be for good. Protect them as they defend our people against missiles and hate. Send safety and redemption to all in captivity. Protect the innocent among the Palestinian people. We pray for their freedom from Hamas. Remove from the hearts of all people fear, hatred, malice, strife, and vengeance. May the Jewish people scattered throughout the earth stand strong in solidarity with the State of Israel. May the State of Israel be a blessing to all its inhabitants and to the Jewish people everywhere. May you spread the covering of your peace over the descendants of Ishmael, son of Hagar, and over the descendants of Isaac, son of Sarah. And may it be fulfilled that they shall hammer their swords into spades and their spears into plowshares. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and they shall learn war no more. And let us say, Amen. And we dedicate this moment of worship to those in need of healing. And as we turn to the next page in our Shabbat programs together for Misha Bayrak for healing, Congregation Beth Ahaba prays for the healing of Bob Marks, Seth Ginther, Neil Gleiberman, Jeffrey Teeger, Charles LeBeau, Rivka Kogan, Colton Richard Schultz Boyd, David Talheimer, Doug Heidman, Randall Markham Berman, Andrea Barnadette Beam, Lorraine Badowski, Kathy Marks, Paul Balinoff, Audrey Landers, Alan Arkava, Anita Leibowitz, Alyssa Freeman, Matthew Deinhart, Dan Newworth, and Beryl Patron. If there's anyone here who'd like to add a name for our prayers of healing, your own name, that of a friend, loved one, anyone at all who could benefit from our prayers of healing, I ask you to please share their names aloud or in your hearts as I scan the room. We pray for their healing as we pray for all those in our world who need healing. We pray for their healing as we pray for the healing of our broken world. Misha Bayrak in our Shabbat programs.
I visited Israel for the first time in the summer of 1999 as I started my rabbinical school training at the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. You have heard that story before. I fell in love with the country and I fell in love with my wife, Rabbi Randy Nagel. I was 24 years old. It was more than half of my lifetime ago. And that first trip to Israel changed me forever. I found my soulmate and it allowed me the privilege of standing before you today on this bima as your rabbi. To say that that was an important trip to Israel would be an understatement. And I have returned to Israel countless times since then. Traveling to Israel has become part of the fabric of my life in my last 20 years as a rabbi. My latest trip to Israel, however, just last week, was very different. It was a quick four-day trip that felt at times like four weeks. And I can say without hesitation that that trip was the most important trip to Israel that I have ever been on. I was there on a mission of the Jewish Federation, Community Federation of Richmond with 23 people from this community to bear witness to what was happening on the ground and to let our brothers and sisters in Israel know that they are not alone. And that no, the world does not hate them in entirety. And I was a little worried about going. Not because there is a war. I truly believe that Israel is now and will always be a safer place to be a Jew than in any other country in the world including this one. I was worried to go, rather, because I didn't want to be a burden. I didn't want the Israelis to have to worry about taking care of us soft Americans when they had so much else to deal with following the horrific attacks on Saturday, October 7th, which, by the way, they are now referring to as the Black Shabbat. But I could not have been more wrong. As a people and as a country, Israel was overjoyed to see us. They, as I said, believe the whole world hates them simply for defending themselves and trying to rescue their own citizens who are still in captivity and being tortured daily. In simply being there, we told them that regardless of what the trends on social media are, they are in fact not alone, and that we support them as brothers and sisters in good times and in bad, as family does. We hugged them, we told them we were sorry, and that we loved them. And in doing so, we made their world a little better. 
the Israelis wanted, they needed, and still do need, people to hear their stories and to bear witness to their experiences as victims without victim blaming or shaming. Israel and the Israelis living there are the victims. And we went there to bear witness to the truth, to bear witness to firsthand accounts and experiences of loss, of terror, of trauma, and if you can believe it, an unbelievable amount of hope. After this trip, I am not only convinced, but I know that this is a just war and it is being fought justly. Never has there been a war where an army has done more than the Israeli Defense Force to prevent civilian casualties. And never has there been a war where a combatant has gone out of their way and done more to place civilians in harm's way and use them in order to turn the world opinion the way Hamas does. And yet the world has turned against Israel and not Hamas. I cannot understand why. I don't think I ever will be able to. And I feel for Israel and her citizens now more than ever even though their very existence has been under attack since the moment of their formation in 1948. During this trip to Israel, our focus, as I said, was on hearing and becoming stewards of stories. And hearing the stories was emotional, it was challenging, and it was important. Over and over, we heard the message, bring them home now. It is written on this dog tag that I got at Hostage Square in Tel Aviv, and that I will be wearing until the hostages are indeed brought home. We heard from a survivor of the attack on a kibbutz who shared the border with Gaza, whose three-generation family lived on the kibbutz. Before October 7th, she and other people on the kibbutz were volunteers in a network of people who helped Palestinians living in Gaza get to and from cancer treatment centers in Israel. She took part in an annual kite festival for peace. One in four people of that kibbutz was taken. Her trust in people is almost gone. And as the length of time that her loved ones and friends are held. Her optimism does not wane. She has hope that even in five years, for that's how long it will take to rebuild the burnt remains of that kibbutz, that her community will rise again. Another survivor shares that every day she counts the days that the hostages are still gone. 
She said she feels like a Holocaust survivor who needs to speak about the October 7th attack so that no one forgets, pretends, or denies that it actually happened. Her belief in peace is shaken, but she has hope that her loved ones will return. Today, the hostages have been in captivity for 174 days. 174 days. I, this week, have signed the Orthodox Unions 180 for 180 project letter, which hopes to send 180,000 signatures to President Biden on the 180th day of captivity, reminding him that the release of the hostages is the most important thing for Judaism, the Jewish people, and Israel. The release of the hostages is the most important thing, period. And I hope you will consider signing the letter online this week as well. 180 for 180. The site of the Nova Music Festival is now a memorial surrounded by a field of flowers. Each victim is represented by their name in a photo on a post, forming a memorial garden of young adults whose lives were cut short. Across the road, a grove of trees has been planted by the Jewish National Fund, each tree in memorandum of an individual victim. Throughout this trip, we listened and we were present for survivors, for families of victims and those taken hostage. We listened to mourners and there were no shortage of mourners. All of them have experienced unbelievable trauma and some of them whose loved ones are still in captivity, are experiencing that trauma renewed every day. Everyone knows someone who was killed or taken, hurt, maimed, or violated on October 7th. The whole country has experienced trauma. They've experienced trauma as individuals, as a people, and as a country, and they will need to heal. And it is our Jewish obligation to comfort the mourners and support our family in their healing. We need to love them to help them heal. We need to be present in their time of need. We need to let them know that they mean something to us and that they as individuals are important. They need to know that they are loved by their worldwide family. I will give a more detailed accounting of my trip in May during the scheduled Israel update, which will allow for conversation and questions afterwards and will allow me to show some pictures from the trip as well. Today, I just wanted to let you know that I went 
and I'm back. But my heart is still there. Today, I ask you to join me in saying, Am Yisrael Chai. The Jewish people will live. Israel will live. I ask you today to join me in signing the letter 180 for 180. I ask you today also to let me know if you would like to participate in a mission of solidarity and support to Israel like the one I went on. If we have enough interest from this congregation, we could in a few short weeks, go for a short trip and bear witness and extend our love and support as I did with the greater Richmond community. It is time now for us to support our family in their time of need and to let Israel know that they are not now, nor have they ever been alone. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. We return now to our Sidorim, to our prayer books. Page 282. Page 282 in the middle of the page. As we rise together for the Elenu, and the cantor opens the ark. seated. We turn now to page 294. Page 294 as we remember those who we've loved and lost. On this Shabbat congregation, Beth Ahaba marks the recent passing of past president of the congregation, Larry Salzman. We mark the Yartzeit anniversary of Bernice Newman Abrams, Alex Ionel Bernstein, Robert Stewart Berman, Rita Shapiro Brandt, Phyllis Buxbaum, Richard B. Cohen, Leroy R. Cohen Jr., Catherine S. Kahn, Harry Lee Kahn, Lillian Feibisch, Margaret French Swim, Blanche Bear Friedman, Edward Davis Gans, Ruth A. Gold, Aaron Gross, Alex Grossman, Sophia Gumnick, Charles Stephen Kamsky, Edward M. Klein, Irving Koslow, Benjamin Learman, 
Bessie Lipsitz, Miriam Mahler, Ernest A. Metzger, Abraham M. Meyer, Eliza Moritz, Ray W. Nathan, Richard Rick Nelson, Marion Ostroff, Merton J. Rosenbaum, Ethel Virginia Sachs Thompson, Morton Schneider, Rosalie H. Schwartzchild, Ronald H. Smith, Raphael Paul Stein, Rhoda R. Talheimer, Charles Paul Weinberg, Preston Scott White, Lee A. Whitlock, Lillian Eichel Zeiler. If there is anyone else here who's observing Shiva, the seven days following death, Shloshim, the 30 days following death, or if you're observing the Yortzeit, anniversary of loved one's death, or if there's simply someone whom you'd like to recall and remember this evening, I ask you once again to share their name aloud or in your hearts as I scan the room. We remember them now. They live in our hearts. And we pray that their memories always be for us an abiding blessing. At this time, I invite all who are in mourning to please rise. All who are observing a yard site to please rise. And as is our custom here at Congregation Bethahaba, the entire community to rise in support of one another and in memory of all those who came before us as we turn to the Mourner's Kaddish together, page 294. <laughs> Bagalawizmankaribi <laughs> Tush bechata venechemata, damiran beomavim ru ame, yehe shlama rabba min shamaya, vechayim maleno veo ko yisrae, vim ru ame, o se shalom bim roma, hu ya se shalom, aleno veo ko yisrae, vim ru ame. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life for us, for all Israel and all the world. And let us say together, Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, to all who dwell on earth, and comfort all who mourn among us. And let us say together, Amen. You may be seated. I now turn it over to Cantor Sarah Beck Berman for a few announcements and messages. Shabbat Shalom once again to everyone here in our beautiful sanctuary and everyone watching on our beautiful YouTube channel. No religious school this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Everyone enjoy spring break, the first spring break, one week of spring break, and then we're back the following week. Torah study continues on Thursdays at noon, either in person or online. This Tuesday, April 2nd, there is an opportunity, two opportunities, in fact, to hear Minister Noah Hacker, the economic attache from the Embassy of Israel in Washington, D.C., um, talk about the state of Israel's economy. There's two sessions you could sign up for. One is at the Weinstein JCC at 2.30 p.m., and the other is here at Beth Ahaba at 6.15 p.m., as far as I know, they're identical sessions. It's just two possible opportunities depending on your schedule. Um, more information and the links to register are on our website calendar and in the e-news and in the lobby. 
and registration is required for security purposes, so please do register if you want to come to that um, one of those two sessions on April 2nd. But also, also Monday night schools on spring break. Oh yeah, there's no Monday night school on April 1st. For adults or teens. No fooling. Monday night school will resume on April 8th. Thank you for laughing. Yeah. Um, no Monday night school on April 1st and no Sunday school this Sunday. Let's not forget first Friday on April 5th with the usual abbreviated service followed by congregational dinner and activities. Members register now. Mark your calendars also for Sunday, April 7th at 12.30 p.m., which is the next Nasha Knowledge with the Women of Beth Ahaba. You'll be hearing from member, our member and a docent at the VMFA, Gail Werner, who will be speaking about House of Fabergé. And everyone is welcome to join the Women of Beth Ahaba for a salad bar luncheon and to learn about the art of Fabergé. Tuesday, April 9th at 5.30 p.m. It's, it's the week of Women of Beth Ahaba, I'm telling you. Women of Beth Ahaba are hosting a challah making and baking event with a light dinner and space is limited, but there are still a few spots left. So if you wanna bake a delicious challah, you can go ask Meryl all about it if you wanna know and you should sign up. Speaking of the Women of Beth Ahaba, in two weeks, April 12th, Friday, is our Shabbat service celebrating the Women of Beth Ahaba, which will feature the Beth Ahaba Choir. Brotherhood is making dinner, and they haven't told us what it is yet, but I'm sure that it will be amazing, as always. And you can check the E! News for more information and to sign up for dinner so they have enough food for everybody. April 13th, Talk Shabbat, 9 a.m., five and unders and the adults who drive them around, followed by Talmud Lunch and Learn, guitar workshop. It's a busy day for you, Rabbi. Yes, and no experience necessary for Talmud or guitar. That's right. But, but you need to have one. You do need a, you need I mean, a guitar. I, yeah. But you don't need the guitar for Talmud Lunch and Learn. That is correct. <laughs> um, on April 19th, we're gonna celebrate global Jewish music. I'm gonna talk about Flori Jagoda, modern Sephardi composer, including her song Pesach um, Purim Lanu, Pesach Alamano. And, oh my gosh, Passover is coming. Our second night Seder registration is open. April 23rd, get ready to start grading your horseradish and making your matzo balls. Back to you, Rabbi. Let's join together in the blessing over the bread. And, and then I'm going to ask... Um, Pam and David Fibish to hand out the bread and the chocolate to everyone there as we turn to our closing song. But first, let us say blessing over bread together. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Amotzi Lechem Min Haaretz. Amen. Cantor, tell everyone their closing song. Turn to page 13, page 13 in your prayer books if you wish to follow along. And we're beginning on the fourth line from the bottom. So one, two, three, four lines from the bottom on page 13, Ya'alos Sadai. Ya'alos
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Please repeat after me. Adonaios. Adonaios. Le'amo yitain. Le'amo yitain. Adonai varech. Adonai varech. Et amo vashalom. Et amo vashalom. May God bless us all with health and strength. May God bless us all with health and strength. May God bless us all with peace. May God bless us all with peace. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>